Okay, guys, let's, uh, let's start. So um, thanks for joining us on the last day of uh, ISC. I'm Tom Birch, Managing Director of Projection Artworks. And we're here today to talk about the importance of being technology agnostic when designing digital experiences. Um, and I think you'll agree it's uh, particularly relevant walking around here where you can see the convergence of display technologies all seemingly merging into one. So I'll start off with um, just a, a little bit about us. For those of you who don't know who Projection Artworks are, um, we're a specialist production company with a creative studio, uh, but we do a lot more than just projection. We create digital experiences using whatever it takes, projection mapping, LED, lighting design, and now moving into OLED technology. Okay, so I've worked in creating digital experiences for over a decade now, and the changes in available technology have been quite unbelievable. Today, the lines between these competing display technologies really are getting more and more blurred. Everything appears to be getting supercharged. If we wind back 10 years and we look at digital projection, we used to be talking about 3,000 lumen projectors. Now we're up at 30,000 lumens plus. Lamps used to last 1,000 hours. Now we're into 20 and perhaps 50,000 hours and more. It wasn't long ago we spoke about XGA resolution, but now we see the launch of the first 8K projector at the show. And projection used to be confined to flat walls, but now we wrap video content around seamlessly um, endless and complex surfaces. But this is just the story of projection. LEDs used to struggle below 10 millimeters. Now we've got pixel pitch as small as 0.7 at the show. This is over 200 times the amount of pixels per square meter. And it's also available in hundreds, if not thousands, of permutations. LCD and plasma screens used to be bulky with thick bezels. Now the latest OLED is wafer thin, super lightweight, and can be shaped into incredible structures and forms, once the domain of just projection mapping. And it's this convergence of technologies why we're here today. And you can see it all around you. Some LED looks like screens, some projection looks like LED. Everyone is actually doing LED, and the world is blending into one. So today, it's much less obvious how to specify the best solution for a job, let alone the best product. So when you're designing your next digital experience, it's time to stop thinking, I need a projection, or we need a video wall, or let's use a four millimeter LED screen. And you really must leave the choice of technology towards the later stages in the process. And it's actually much more pertinent to be asking this more fundamental question. How do you want this experience to make your audience feel? Happy, surprised, scared, delighted? What story do we want to tell? What is the creative journey going to be? What must they leave feeling? And in today's technology-driven world, this is even more important than ever. Us humans strive for some emotional connection, particularly with the technology that we engage with. The story must be compelling, yes. The overall experience must be seamless, yes. But importantly, the technology needs to be almost invisible. A TV screen, projector, a video wall, it's just not enough. We're craving experiences, moments that create feelings, adventures that create emotions. And in doing so, you create additional value by creating a natural desire to consume more, enjoy more, and share socially. And if we achieve all this, the rewards are big. We create connections and feelings which last much longer than the experience itself. It's easy to imagine how a beautifully designed 30-second digital experience can create a feeling of excitement and amazement, which stays in your memory for half a lifetime. And perhaps you've had a number of these here at ISE. We discuss feelings, we share feelings, we engage with feelings, and we have to be in the game of creating feelings, not installing technology. So now we're going to look at a number of projects designed using the full spectrum of technologies and explore how a technology agnostic approach has delivered improved value, creativity, and effectiveness. So we're going to start with this project. Um, this brief was to create a giant outdoor projection cube with content that would disrupt commuters on their daily journeys. The eight-week installation was in the summer. So to create standout during the daytime, rear projection was going to be complicated, cost prohibitive, and not the right tool for the job. So we started designing an LED cube using the highest resolution LED panels we could find at the time. And what was interesting in that 
project was the role that we played. And uh, it was only because we were responsible for not only the final design and build of the LED solution, but also for commissioning the artwork on the project by an artist called Rupert Newman. Halfway through the, uh, the, the sort of pre-production process, we faced some really serious budget constraints. Um, and that was really in trying to create one continuous, complete LED cube. But we kept focused on our mission, which was to make consumers, uh, sorry, commuters feel disrupted. And then we began by value engineering back from that, a far more engaging canvas with a far more engaging creative, using approximately 60% of the LED panels that we would have done using the full cube approach. Next, we'll take a look at a, um, a brief to create a huge projection on the side of the BT Tower for the closing moments of the Champion League final. Uh, the game was in the summer, and it was in the evening. And the problem was, at 9.45, when most of the, uh, the uh, guys were leaving the stadium, it was only just going to be getting dark. I've only a very limited number of people were going to see this projection. So we started to explore ways in which we could improve the media opportunity. We considered a number of LED options, from rigid screens to meshes, uh, but these were all rejected based on cost, complexity of installations, fittings to the buildings, and a number of other factors. And in, on top of that, the resolution that we could have achieved for the budget was also going to be inadequate for the content being displayed. So we came up with a solution um, built on some previous work that we'd done in Milan. Actually, it's a poster during the daytime featuring the sponsor's logo and key messaging. This created a huge advertising value for the site by day, and then at night time, this turned into a projection mapping show, so they really got the best of both worlds. The poster was up for seven days, uh, and there was massive additional exposure by creating this poster on top of what would otherwise be two two-hour windows of projection mapping in the evening. Now, that technique does require some quite complicated content creation um, techniques uh, and quite a lot of rules to follow, but I think the results speak for themselves. So moving on now to another uh, project. Um, this was for the M&M's &M, &M World flagship store in Leicester Square. And our client approached us um, looking for an innovative signage strategy to transform the facade of their building and increase footfall through the doors. Part of the brief was to open up the windows so that people could see actually inside the store. This was the previous installation. It came down to quite low. It actually blocked most of the visibility in. Um, and they tasked us with creating a giant rear projection strip, one and a half meters wide, all the way around the top of the store. So we started doing some calculations. Um, at one and a half meters high, the projections were roughly two and a quarter meters wide. Um, it was a 60 meter length from one end of the store all the way around to the end. So we were talking about in excess of 30 projectors to do the job. Next challenge, to get the high brightness that was required for the visibility from across Leicester Square, we'd have to use an opaque rear projection film. And then we started back with the original problem. We were blocking the view into the store with that solution. So naturally, we took a step back and started thinking a little bit wider. What was the, the messaging that we actually needed to display? What resolution, what distance did people have to be consuming this information for? And how bright did it have to be? So bringing all these ideas together, uh, we concluded that what was once new and is now everywhere, a 10 millimeter transparent LED screen wrapped around the top facade um, was the best approach. And our client had originally considered LED, but had rejected it based on cost, not understanding the extent of the product available. The solution provided a high brightness screen, which was visible from over 100 meters away on the other side of Leicester Square. And it was also able to compete with the digital signage in the area. And near Piccadilly Circus, there was a lot of LED around. So as you can see from the creative running around that strip at the top of the window there, um, it was very bold, very top line, and it didn't actually require any of the resolution that projection would have offered either. So now we're going to move away from uh, commercial projects and um, have a look at this work that we did here. Um, this was some lateral thinking in a different area of technology, namely in the studio and actually how we would go about creating the content. So a few, few years ago, um, for our 10-year anniversary, we wanted to wind back the clock and think about how we would create some of the content we typically use CGI for now, using perhaps more traditional and craft-driven techniques. On top of that, then, how would we actually map that content to a building? So everything you're about to see in this next video was created by building small-scale miniature models of the facade of the building and then using physical techniques to interact with it and then filming it all from a fixed perspective, bringing all those clips together and then mapping it back onto the building. 
Um, and the variety of cl um, the clips can be seen in the bottom left-hand side of the screen as we go through. And one of the things that's very interesting about the approach that we were using here is that actually a lot of the techniques to create some of the effects are much cheaper and much more cost-effective than it is to create in a normal CGI pipeline. So, for example, those of you who are aware, creating fluids, smoke, water simulations, all these techniques are very time-intensive in the studio. And they're actually reasonably quick um, and simple to create using an approach like this. We actually created all the effects for that show within 10 hours' worth of filming. And the amount of footage that we created was incomparable to what we could create in the studio in 10 hours. Additionally, I think the craft and the story behind it creates a va value and admiration for the work. So it was less budget, more value, and overall a way better and more engaging story to tell. So this is a project hot off the press. Uh, uh, some work that we did in Davos at the World Economic Forum. Um, and I think really in many ways this is one of the sort of ultimate stories of convergence of display technologies. Our clients started out with a brief to create an attraction in Davos. Um, it was meant to stop people in their tracks, catch their attention, and make them feel obliged to come in and explore more of the displays that were on offer. Uh, the initial brief was to use a, um, a, 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 sort of a, a window display created out of string and projection mapping um, to create a projection map sculpture. And so we started out by doing some calculations as to how many projectors we'd need, how far back they'd need to be positioned, where would we put them, how far back from the actual front of the window the display itself would start, um, and then thinking about considerations of the viewing in, uh, in daytime. Now, all of those issues sound quite challenging from a projection mapping point of view, but we'd actually dealt with all those with a project we did for, uh, for Fabergé and Harrods a couple of years back. So it was possible to create a daylight visible projection map window display, but was that really the best approach? So, we were lucky enough on this project, again, to be working with the creative direction in, in, in one hand and one team, and then the physical build with another team. And we realized quite quickly that the creative was relatively simple. Um, it didn't need to be super high resolution. And perhaps creating an LED volumetric pixel map display might be a better approach for the problem. So we started about doing that and doing some simulations, and this is where we ended up. And so in that, we created a window display that was so stunning that everyone would stop and look at it. It was so bright that it worked in direct sunlight, and it was so tall it filled the entire void of the window. Um, and it was everything that we couldn't have created if we'd stuck to our original game plan, which was to do a projection map display. And I say that it's a nice convergence story as well, because um, from a, a, a content creation point of view, we were using the same techniques. But from a video playback point of view, um, we were going to use a, uh, a system called Disguise, formerly D3, for the actual content playback. And what was interesting was the similarities between what we were doing here when we were working with a volumetric pixel mapped LED display and actually all the approaches we would use for projection mapping on a building. So again, it was another story of all these ideas coming together. OK, so we're going to finish um, on our last innovation in digital experiences. And this is um, a curved OLED wall that we've just created. Um, more so on top of that, it uses emotional tracking technology to empirically analyze the user's reaction to content as it's placed on the displays in front of them. So the brief was to create a standout digital uh, solution to make people feel connected with technology and amazed with what the future would bring. On offer from the local production company was a 2.6 mil LED screen. It was a nice display. But then we looked at the overall experience of what people were going to be going through as they went through this event, and it was going to be the third LED display in as many minutes that the guests would have been put in front of. Um, so although it would have been nice, we took a little step back and we thought about how actually uh, else could we produce this display. Now, it needed to be high resolution because of the content and the text that was going to be displayed within the screen. Um, and there were a lot of other details that need to be communicated through this journey. So our immediate thought was projection. Um, the rigging was a bit of a pain, possibly some problematic shadows, but it was all just about achievable. But then we remember what the brief was, and the brief was to make people feel amazed by the technology and what the future could bring. And so we asked our client to come and have a look at our OLED showroom that we've just created and to remember how it made them feel. Because actually, I think that's the one thing you would probably all agree with, is that amazement is one of those first feelings that you get when you actually look at an OLED screen or an OLED wall. 
So before long, we built a 180 degree, three meter um, in diameter curved OLED wall, um, all finished uh, in piano gloss black around um, to maximize the impact of LG's perfect colors on perfect blacks. So in that, yeah, the software was analyzing the facial uh, uh, emotions and tracking them and then monitoring them against interactive dynamic content and then comparing them against other people who'd been to the show and other people who'd experienced the content. So we're now able to test what our actual experiences genuinely make our audiences feel. I think also interestingly from an integration point of view when we're looking at displays like that is actually the impact on the framing of the technology and how it's actually housed can have a massive impact on the perceived brightness and contrast. So that was all finished in piano black to go with the um, very dark and black screens to go with them. So as we mentioned at the beginning, this whole idea of creative integration, the examples that you've just seen give numerous um, references as to why it's so important to consider the experience as one and not to think about it as the technology and the content. So in the first example with the cube, um, the LED solution gave infinitely better results than would have been if it was a rear projection cube. Um, in the center of the example of the poster, they're really looking at the increased value that can be bought by bringing together the ideas. The M&M's example, the LED screen is infinitely more effective than the rear projection solution would ever have been. Um, I love the example of the creativity and storytelling and, and looking at craft to create content um, through to actually really getting standout attraction and drawing people in with something genuinely innovative and different. Um, and then the last example that we've looked at there, looking at actually how we can really empirically test um, emotional uh, engagement with a piece of content or a piece. So this really is the role that we do at Projection Artworks, is that we're creatively integrating all of these challenges and never succumbing to a particular technology at the briefing stage. We're always questioning, always striving for that little bit more by always asking that question that we asked at the beginning, is that how do you want to make your audience feel? What impression must it leave? And that really is the most important question. And then we work with any pixel-driven technology to create that feeling. And I think everyone uh, is here is going to be obviously willing to embrace technology or else you wouldn't be at ISE. Um, and our message is never to be scared by the almost infinite selection of solutions available or worried about really which one is best for you. Um, but our message is definitely um, don't get caught up in trying to define the final technology solution until you've allowed some creative integrators to really take a step back, look at the experience as a whole, um, and explore the continually evolving world of converging display technologies that are on offer today. Thank you.